I am Dr. Rashid Ahmed from the Department of Physics of Kohat University of Science and Technology. In the subject of particle physics with the course code PHY452, we are at the lecture number 10. And the topic is the eightfold way. Like in the subject of chemistry, when we had the situation of many elements discovered and there was a need to classify them after many unsuccessful but important attempts, Mendeleev was able to create a periodic table for such elements. A similar situation was faced in particle physics when in 1950s there were many elementary particles discovered and there was a similar need to classify them. Mendeleev of particle physics was Mary Gellman, who for in his first ever attempt to classify elementary particles proposed a mechanism of the eightfold way. Today we are going to understand how eightfold way works with the some simple examples. So let's first start with what is the eightfold way. Eightfold way was proposed by Gelman and Neiman independently and it was the first ever classification scheme for fundamental particles. And uh, the purpose was to arrange mesons and baryons into some geometrical patterns. So now we are going to see the first example which is called the baryon octet where eight of the baryons were arranged into a geometrical pattern of hexagon. But for this pattern to work we need to select two properties. The first property is strangeness. So we will assign to every corner and every place in th this hexagon a property of strangeness by using a straight line. So this means that in the direction of the straight line every place has got or every corner at least has got the property of strangeness s is equal to 0. And then in the next line which is in the middle of this hexagon we assign s is equal to minus 1 and everything coming straight into this line will get a property of s is equal to minus 1 and similarly for s is equal to minus 2 we will have a third line which is at the bottom of this hexagon. The second property we will assign to every place and corner of this hexagon is charge and that will be done by using the slanted lines. For example the first slanted line will give the q is equal to plus 1 and this in the direction of this line every place and corner will get the charge equal to plus 1. The next line is here in the middle and it is q is equal to 0 and third line and the last line is q is equal to minus 1 which will give uh, the, uh, the value of q is equal to minus 1 to every uh, place and corner on this line. So after completing this geometrical pattern now we will put all the uh, particles which can be fitted into these corners. For example, into this right, uh, into this left corner, uh, we can put a particle over here which has the strangeness s is equal to 0 and the charge q is equal to 0. You can imagine of such particle and which is also a baryon is neutron. So, neutron is a chargeless particle having a strangeness 0. But when you come to the next corner over here, now you can put here some particle which has strain is 0 but on the other hand has charge q is equal to plus 1. And again you can easily guess that this particle can be proton because it has a charge plus 1 and strain is 0. In the similar fashion if we move to the next corner or the uh, next place we find that sigma minus satisfies such uh, properties like strain is minus 1 and charge minus 1 and then z minus satisfy the properties of this corner and sigma naught is satisfying uh, sorry zeta naught satisfying uh, psi naught is satisfying the properties of this corner and in the last place sigma plus is satisfying the properties of this corner. So we had now six we have now six particles uh, coming at the six different places uh, uh, with the two properties of strainness and charge. But since it is an octet, we need to put two more extra particles and that we can then we can do by putting them into the center 
of this hexagon that is sigma naught and lambda so they will get the charge from this slanted line and strangeness from this middle line so in this way uh, gelman was able to classify and he called this abrian octet these eight particles into a one group so this was the octet created for baryons can we create a octet for mesons yes we can do that and in the next example we create this so, but here you can see that strangeness uh, assignment of strangeness with these straight lines is not really a strict process and it is arbitrary because now we are starting from s is equal to 1 in the previous example we start from s is equal to 0 over here but it depends on the requirement now we need to put uh, particles on this hexagon in the mesons octets but these has to these particles have to be mesons in this corner it comes k naught and k plus and k pi minus pi plus k minus and k bar minus you can see the difference over here this particle is actually the anti particle and this is uh, the difference between the baryon octet and the meson octet in the baryon octet there was no anti particle but in the meson octet we have now this anti particle entering together with all uh, particles uh, we can have a uh, uh, anti baryon octet but uh, the uh, particles and antiparticles do not mix together into same group as in the case of mesons where uh, an antiparticle uh, came here and then we need to put uh, two extra particles in the center which is pi naught and eta now the question arises whether this uh, hexagon is the only geometrical pattern where we can group the particles well surely not we can have uh, further um, uh, patterns and uh, the number of particles may also change for example in the next exam example in the baryon decouplet you can see that we will have 10 particles of the baryons and not arranged in the hexagon uh, pattern but in the triangle pattern in this inverted triangle Mary Gelman actually created the Brian decouplet so uh, we have again two properties strangeness and uh, charge and we need to create places for them so first we start with s is equal to 0 as we do in the Brian uh, case and uh, uh, this uh, straight line will give every every uh, place in on this straight line uh, in front of this arrow will be given a property of s is equal to 0 if we go on we, we can have uh, arrow for s minus 1 s minus 2 and s minus 3 and then we need to create slanted lines for the uh, charges charge uh, charges of the particles so for example q minus 1 here q 0 q plus 1 and q plus 2 and the next step is to put particles into their right places so similarly uh, like we done in the previous two examples we start putting particles and you can check for yourselves that uh, these particles actually s uh, satisfy uh, the requirements of uh, this place with respect to s having strangeness and charge one uh, uh, important point which happens here is this uh, uh, omega minus particle at the time of uh, uh, creation of this baryon decouplet omega, nas um, omega minus was not uh, experimentally discovered and then uh, uh, Mary Gelman uh, calculated its mass and charge and all the properties and predicted that such particle will be discovered and fortunately for him this particle was discovered it is similar to the uh, Mendeleev uh, periodic table where there were many holes left and Mendeleev predicted that such elements uh, uh, exist and later on people uh, tried to discover them and they were discovered so in this way the Mendeleev periodic table was uh, even more helpful in uh, uh, in discovery of uh, 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 elements similar situation happened here when this omega minus was predicted by baryon decouplet and this eightfold way and later on experimentally uh, discovered okay so uh, then we can also have the meson nonits although uh, it is a similar pattern of hexagon uh, strainnesses and uh, charges and all these particles but instead of eight particles we can put here over here another extra particles called eta prime and this uh, by this way we can create a meson nonits there are many meson nonits already created and in the book you can look up this is like a SPDF uh, classification uh, uh, configuration of electronic uh, electronic configuration 
uh, of SPDF system. We, uh, here we can use these meson nonets as uh, configuration of elementary particles. Okay. So, uh, with this we seen that uh, many, uh, many particles uh, were classified and uh, this was a very successful scheme, this eightfold way and uh, so many particles for the next 10 years like it started in 1950s and for the ne next 10 years it went on and the classification was done. But there was uh, some uh, false things also because some of the particles uh, came into these uh, geometrical patterns and then went away and there were many particles which could not be fitted into uh, this pattern. So, since classification is the beginning of any science, this eightfold way given a startup uh, for uh, classification of elementary particles. Although there were uh, many discrepancies involved in eightfold way and later on we have to abandon this for uh, more um, fundamental uh, patterns which is called the quark model. Uh, where we uh, have more fundamental particles quark uh, uh, named quarks coming into the story and we had to revise all this scheme. But the, uh, the essence and the uh, usefulness of eightfold way is uh, providing the um, basis for creating the quark model. With this, I thank you all.